Hey guys, Avi here and welcome back to the Codex. In this video, we're going to continue our Python and Flask series, learning more about Jinja 2, the markup language used in templating, and understanding how we can do more than just render a simple variable in our HTML template. Let's get started. So first thing first, guys, right now we can go ahead and show a variable to the user, and that's great. For most cases, that would be plenty. However, I want to go ahead and cover conditional statements and loops in Jinja 2 so that you have a better idea of how to render content in your HTML templates using Flask. Let's get started. First thing first, let's go ahead and give a conditional statement. For example, let's say that um, today is raining or today is sunny. I want to go ahead and write that on my block. So I'm going to go ahead and say a statement for today it is sunny and then today it is rainy. And I want to show either or, not both of them together, but depending on a Boolean value, either say it's sunny or it's rainy. So how can I go ahead and do that with Jinja? Well, that is an amazing thing about Jinja. It allows conditional statements. So the way this will get rendered or the way we can do this is by one passing in a conditional variable into our template. So right now, author is equal to Bob. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and say um, weather or sunny is equal to true. Okay, so again, I'm creating a variable called sunny and that is equal to true. And what this does is it's going to go ahead and check to see what the value of sunny is in our blog.html file. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and write the Jinja syntax for conditional statement. The way that works, guys, is again, you're going to use curly brackets, but instead of doing another set of curly brackets to do an actual command, it is the percent sign. So inside of these percent signs, we're going to go ahead and say if sunny. Again, sunny is the variable we're passing into our template. The percent signs allocate for a command, the double curly brackets allocate for a variable. So if sunny, I want to go ahead and render this. Otherwise, I need to mention the else. So else percent and I want to go ahead and render it is rainy. And now I need to go ahead and end my if statement. Otherwise, it will continue to take in all of this into my else as well. So I'm going to go ahead and say over here, and if okay so let me go ahead and walk you through this one more time if sunny today it is sunny else today it is rainy and if and this entire thing is known as my conditional statement in jinja so go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and restart our server um let me go ahead and pull this up give me one second let me refresh uh, looks like I have to restart the server. So restart the server and let's take a look. Today it is sunny. Fantastic. And the reason for that is because sunny is true. Now if I go ahead and say sunny is equal to false and go ahead and run this and refresh. Today it is rainy. Fantastic. So that is how you do conditional statements in Jinja. Now this is a very simple case guys, but imagine the use case. Whether there's a complete block of text you want to show the user, whether you want to show the user an alert, well, there's a complete section of the website you want hidden from the user if they're not logged in. There are many different cases where this is extremely useful and you can use this syntax to render content that you need or you don't need. Fantastic. Now, the second thing I want to cover in this video, guys, is looping. For example, if I have a dictionary of content, of values, and I want to render them one by one, instead of writing a statement for each one of them, I can use a for loop, which is presented by Jinja, in order to go through each one of my items in my dictionary and render them in my template. So continuing on from this, I'm going to go ahead and first create this dictionary of data. So inside of my blog, I'm going to go ahead and create a post dictionary. And this post dictionary is going to be quite simple. Um, it's actually going to be an array and every single array will have um, a series of different sort of dictionary items, I guess you could say. And the way this would work guys is each single post has a title and it has an author. So in this scenario, I'm going to go ahead and say my title is going to be um, technology, technology in 2019. The author is going to be Avi. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and do that for you guys. And that is my first item. And my second item in my array is going to be title. Um, expansion of oil in Russia and then my author is going to be Bob okay so what we've done here guys is take a look at the syntax of how I'm writing this again I have a post variable which is an array and inside of this array I have two dictionary items 
that have a title and author each. So each one of these counts as a post item. Every post has a title and an author. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is pass this into our template. So we're gonna create a post variable inside of our template and set this equal to our post variable inside of our blob, okay? So author equals Bob, son equals false, post is equal to posts. There we go. And now let's go to our blog.html. And over here, guys, we're gonna go ahead and render the post that we have just created. So in this scenario, I'm gonna go ahead and use the for loop syntax in Jinja. And I'm gonna say for post in posts, I'm gonna go ahead and render each and every post. So in this scenario, I'm gonna have an H2 tag for the title and the title is going to be post.title. Again, it's following the syntax that we use in our actual dictionary creation. Every single dictionary item had a title and an author. If every single post object refers to each of these items, then to get the title and the author will be post.title and post.author. So post.title is that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say over here, h3, the author colon is going to be, and then inside of this post.author. So again, all we're doing here is we're using a for loop to go through every single item inside of our list and then get the post.title and post.author of every single post. Now what we'll do is go ahead and end the for loop. So end for loop, and then we can go ahead and render this in our website. So go ahead and restart the server, refresh, and we get technology in 2019, author Avi, expansion of oil in Russia, author Bob. Fantastic. So in this video, guys, we learned two new things with Jinja. We learned how to add conditional statements to render content in our template. And we also learned how to iterate through data and show everything in a very simple and concise statement. By iterating through data, it saves us time, it saves us space, and it makes for very efficient code. Anyways, thanks so much for listening, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.